Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In this particular tutorial, we are going to learn about PNP PowerShell and how it will be simplifying Microsoft 365 and SharePoint online management. My name is Clavin. I'm a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. But that being said, this is about PowerShell. No matter if you are a no-code developer, if you are a SharePoint admin, or even if you are full-fledged developer. One tool that you should know is PowerShell. This tool really, really simplifies your life. So that being said, what is PNP PowerShell? PNP PowerShell is a PowerShell module. Now, what's a module? A module is a set of commandlets bundled together. What is a commandlet? A commandlet is a specific command that you execute using your PowerShell window to complete a task. Okay, so back to the definition, PNP PowerShell is a PowerShell module designed to manage and automate Microsoft 365 environments, including SharePoint Online. It offers around 700 command lines for administrators and most importantly, developers. It doesn't matter if you are a citizen developer or a full-fledged developer. PowerShell is one tool that you need to keep close because it will help you a lot. That being said, the main features of PowerShell includes, it gives you <coughs> comprehensive commandlet libraries for SharePoint Online, Microsoft Teams, Planner, Power Platform, Entra, Preview, and much more. It is cross-platform, so it doesn't matter if you are on a Windows computer, Mac, or Linux, you can just use it. Finally, it's a community-driven development, so it's an open source project which continuously updates. That being said, it's time for the demo. So here, I'm on a computer and I want to use PowerShell with my environment, okay, with my SharePoint environment or M365 environment. Considering this is the first time that we are going to go ahead and work with PowerShell and M365. So this might be a beginner's level tutorial. So I want to start with a clean slate. So first and foremost, I want to install PowerShell. Okay, now we'll say, Clavin, you're on a Windows, you should have PowerShell. Yes, I have PowerShell, but I would also consider having PowerShell 7. The reason being it's cross-platform. Okay, PowerShell 7 is a cross-platform tool. So I'll go into the installation of PowerShell and I will say install with MSI. Mine is a 64-bit MSI. If you see, it says PowerShell 7. I'll click on it and I'll go ahead and open this particular file. So first step, if you have PowerShell, it's fine. You can use it, but I think PowerShell 7 is a little bit better. So here is a fancy icon that comes up. I'll click on next, I'll click on next. I'll I'll leave it at default. I don't want to do anything such as remoting, etc. But if you're going ahead and doing that, maybe you want it. Um, I'll just click on next, click on next, and I'll click on install. So while this gets installed, I told you about cross-platform, but the another improvement that PowerShell 7 has, it has built in .NET 7, which offers better performance than the previous PowerShells which used .NET Framework. In addition to that, you have got pipelines and parallelizations. We are not going to use that, but you can. It also has error actions, so you can add an extra parameter known as dash error action to get granular control of the error. In addition to that, it also supports modern, uh, modern operators such as question mark, ampersands, pipe operators, and most of the modules are compatible with it. The PowerShell 7 installation was pretty quick. I liked it. So now that we have PowerShell 7, let's quickly check. So we have PowerShell 7, that's good. We will install none other than PNP. So to install PNP, I will go to the browser again and I'll type in PNP. So I'll click here. I'll click, I'll copy this. Okay, this says, it tells me that if I want to install module, go and hit this commandlet. So, just go to PowerShell 7 
I'm going to run it as an administrator. So most of the time you might get errors if you're not running it as admin. I have ran it as admin and I will install PNP PowerShell in the current scope. And here it will ask me a question. This is an untrusted repository. Now, does this mean that this is all bad? No, it doesn't mean that it is bad. As I told you at the start of this video tutorial, PNP PowerShell is an open source project. That's the reason why you get this um, prompt. So I will just say A and it will start installing the package. What does A mean? Yes to all of the questions, okay? If your organization is not okay with this, please do consult with your security person and they should help you get an answer. But for me, I think it's fine. So it also has nightly build. You can install it in Docker and so on and so on. If you want to uninstall it, you can uninstall it as well. So that being said, we have installed PowerShell. Now we need to go ahead and connect it with SharePoint Online. So even before installing it in SharePoint Online, there were some changes that happened very recently. Uh, the recent changes actually makes our life a little difficult, okay? So what were the changes? The changes were PNP Management Shell introduced significant changes for users who registered the application. So to use this PowerShell, you needed to have an Azure AD application. Now, Microsoft does not go ahead and provision that application for you. You need to go ahead and provision the application. Previously, it was multi-tenant. However, in September 9, 2024, it, they just removed it, which impacted many people and their scripts, etc. We need to set up few things before using PowerShell. Now, what are the few things? The first thing you need to have enough privileges to set up this application in your Azure. So you need to have some level of access. If you don't have it, your system admin can get you that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to type in portal.azure.com. And because this is a fresh tenant, it will tell me about these things. That's all fine. I'll skip them. So I'll type in app registration so app registration is here and here my friends I can see all the applications that are created it just has one default application I don't care about it but what I care about is creating a PNP application so I'll just say PNP SPF X app in this case I will create an organization only and it's a single tenant organization okay in this case I will leave this blank as a redirect URL and I'll click on register so this will register an application in my Azure okay so I have the app registered so the next step would be to create a self-signed certificate the self-signed certificate will help you authenticate against your application so I'm going to leave a link in the description section below, but I will just hit enter here and I will scroll down. So this is the article and I want to create a self-signed certificate. So I need to follow instructions from here. Okay, now where will I run these instructions? I'll run it in my PowerShell. So I'm keep going to keep it simple. First and foremost, I'll open a notepad so that you actually see the commandlet because we will need to modify something before running. So it tells me create a self-signed certificate. I'll give my company name. I'll say Clav Demo. I'll change the dates on this. Just make it 2025. No, 2024 year. We are in 2024. Type in 11 and guess today's date. Okay. Maybe this is not today's date. Again, messed it up. That's why you need to always go ahead and compile the command before you paste it in 2025 I leave the other things as is so what it's going to do it's going to go ahead and create a self-signed certificate so I'll create the self-signed certificate but what I'll do is that I'll do a CD and I'll create a folder new folder search for PNP I'll copy this path and I'll paste it in okay 
Now I'll go back to my notepad and I'll paste it in. One thing that you need to understand, every commandlet is not built in. Okay, we need to go ahead and understand that there was a script down here which we need to actually copy paste and save. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go and open a new notepad instance, copy it here, save it. I'll give it a meaningful name. The name should match the name out here. So it should be meaningful and it should match. So I'm just going to copy it, paste it here, make sure that it is all files, go into this folder so that the script is all in place. Right, now that the file is saved, it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and try my luck again. And if you see this time, I didn't go ahead and see an error. Now, most importantly, you need to go ahead and give it a private key. Understand this, the private key is important. Keep it safe because it will be used on later. So the certificate has been created, right? The certificate has been created and it has been stored here, okay? Now, most importantly, you will see that there are two types of files out here. So let me go and into the view, click on show and I'll say extension. So one is the cert and one is the PFX. PFX holds the public key. So I have the certificates with me and I know the password. Okay, so this is the important part. If you want to know more about certificates and more about other stuff, the one that we just used for creating the certificate. This is quite a nice article and it gives you more context on why we are doing this and what is a cert and why do we use a PFX to encrypt the password, etc. So that being said, this is all good. We have it here. So the next step would be to go into the PNP shell and we need to use the certificate or upload the certificate to use it. So I'm going to click on app registrations, I'm going to click on certificates and secrets going to click on certificates and I'm going to upload a certificate. Which certificate I'm going to upload? I'm going to upload the certificate that I just created. So I'll go into PNP and it will take only the cert. I'll give this a name. I'll say PNP cert and I'll click on add. Perfect, right? So the PNP cert has been added. The next step would be to give some permissions. Now, as I told you, this can connect to Microsoft Teams, it can connect to SharePoint uh, online, and it can connect to Preview, etc., etc. But let's focus on what you need. In this demo, we will focus on SharePoint online. So the most important bit out here is to give permissions. Now, 90% of the error comes when you're trying a command lent when you you don't give it enough permissions. But it doesn't mean that you give all the permissions in the world, right? So I'm going to work with SharePoint. I'm going to go ahead and give it some level of permissions such that it can work with it. So I want to work with application permissions firstly. I'll give it sites. Let me give it full control, right? And let's say that I want to also give permissions to go ahead and access the user information. So say user, but I just want to read, okay? I will be very specific about my permissions because I don't want to get into any security hazards. Uh, same with you. You can give it all the permission that you required, but only go for the minimal permission that you need. Very, very important. Now, there are a few things that you might want to configure using the graph as well. Um, in this case, in one of the further tutorials, we'll talk about why graph is required. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give it the same permission level but I'm going to give it as delegated. So if you have an application that you're going to use, which requires permissions under the user context, you will go ahead and do that. Now, this is not mandatory, but I usually do that because I know that my application will need it. So I will say sites.fullcontrol, I'll just add it permissions. I'll add another permission out here, which will be again graph, but my and it will go ahead and do 
user dot read maybe user I just want to give it user based permission so let me say user dot read all perfect right so this is the minimalistic permission that I'm going to give my application so anything that interacts with it can go ahead and use this permission I'll click on grant permission and it's an admin consent so understand that uh, it clearly tells you that you have given the consent and you'll see a difference out here these three are delegated whereas these three are these three are delegated and these two are application specific what is the meaning of delegation for example if a user has a permission to do something it will run under the context of the user and it will only do it if the user has enough privileges now when I say that understand this for example if you're trying to get a file from SharePoint and if the user doesn't have the permission to get the file it will fail that means it's delegated only if the user has the permission they will be able to get the files from SharePoint now that is all good and that's excellent the next step would be to go ahead and test can we actually connect our PNP with M365 so that being said let me actually clear the screen so CLS is used to clear the screen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in a command as I did previously out here and this is going to help us connect to PNP online so if you see it tells connect PNP online and it needs a client ID okay so what is the client ID so from where will you get the client ID uh, you go back to your Azure go to your overview and you get the application ID which is also known as the client ID so this is my client ID okay so I can hard code it out here now the certificate path now from where will we get the certificate path we stored the certificate on a computer so I'll use this path out here okay use this path so this is the certificate path I'm going to replace this with the certificate path certificate password now I'm not going to show you my certificate password okay I'll type it interactively but let's say that your certificate password was none other than Clavin right so you can just pass it out here but what I'll do is that I'll I'll use a variable and type it in interactively I'm going to go ahead and use it a SharePoint URL so it needs a SharePoint URL so I copied it in so SharePoint URL right paste it in out here and then the tenant URL so what is the tenant URL so if I go out here so I can click on switch directory and here you see that the domain is actually the tenant URL so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to pass it this out here okay now don't be confused with the name I use tenant URL but it's the tenant out here and how do you get it I already showed you that so at this point uh, I think we are good for running a partial command but that being said I'll go back here and I'll try to run the command but before I run the command I want to give it a certificate I want to give it a certificate password right so I'm going to say I'm going to do something like this because this was my variable and I'm going to type in my password now you see the password it's all asterisk so that's good and if you see I'm using the same variable out here so where's the variable certificate password so this looks good can paste it and hit enter if the things have worked as expected we should not see an error and boom we don't have an error so let's do a basic PNP command so I will say try to get all tenant sites maybe something like that and if I just print and just hit all sites and it gives me all sites in the company so we have successfully connected to PNP here my friends I would like to conclude my demo 
I hope that this was informative. If you have any specific use case which you need a script for, let me know in the description section below. I will either create the script or maybe point you to the right direction. Have a great day. Bye-bye.